I have a question from Spider-Man. <laughs> That's good, because Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire wasn't exactly good with his finances. Okay, so his question is, I have a car loan with 3% interest rate for 72 months. I owe about $30,000 on it with another four years to go. Do I really need to pay it off right away when my car loan is only at 3%? Shouldn't I invest the difference like you talk about with mortgage? This is a actually a very common question I get in my line of work. I don't know your whole financial picture, but I would ask you if the car loan is the only debt you have or if you're working on something else like credit cards and student loans. You said you have about $30,000 left and on your car loan with four years left. So, wow, you bought a very expensive vehicle. If I do the reverse math on this, then you probably got a $50,000 car loan to begin with and you now have about $30,000 left. So let me tell you what I would do if I had $30,000 left on my car loan, but I'll give you the breakdown first. A car loan isn't something that you wanna hold on to because most vehicles you own will depreciate over time, unless you have the rare and expensive vehicle uh, that appreciates over time. And a vehicle in general is a liability because it is a continuous depreciating asset. Now, you may argue with me that cars have been depreciating since 2021. This is a unique time for used cars and it is simply not sustainable. There are a lot of brand new vehicles sitting in the lot waiting for computer chips right now because of the supply chain shortages. As soon as the supply for new cars go up, then prices for the used vehicles will come down. This will most likely happen probably by the end of 2022 or maybe 2023. Look at the chart of all of these used vehicles that have been appreciating since 2021. So take a look at this from the Wall Street Journal. And this is insane. Uh, this is crazy. Dodge Grand Caravan in January 2021 was worth about $15,000, now it's about $26,000. Nissan Versa from $9,800 to $16,000, and Toyota Prius from $17,000 to almost $29,000 in 2022. And they all have about 60% increase year over year. I've also been getting random phone calls from local dealerships, leaving me voicemail that they wanna buy my car. I don't know how they got my phone number, but it is an insane market right now. So because of a slowdown in new car production, the auto industry now has a high demand for used vehicles. If you're heavily in debt and you have a car that is worth a lot in the secondhand market, I would find out if selling that vehicle could pay off your remaining debt, if you have any. It could be an eye-opening moment when you realize how much your vehicle is worth and how quickly you could get out of debt. If you're not in debt and your argument is why you should pay $50,000 in cash when you could invest that $50,000 and make more than 3% in the stock market over the course of six years. Let's take this crazy times out of the equation. You can also download a spreadsheet for free by visiting firesidechat.com contact. Having a $800 car payment on something that depreciates over time will hurt your net worth in the next six years or however long your your loan is you're going to end up with an upside down car loan where you owe more on the car than it is uh, its market value even in this crazy market your car most likely already depreciated over the last two years as soon as you drive off your brand new car your car's value drops about 20 to 30 percent by the end of the first year from year two to year six it's going to depreciate on average 15 percent per year so before you buy a brand new car, I want you to really do some research about the car depreciation because it depends on the brand and model you're looking to buy. But the best way to save that 30% of depreciation is to buy a used car that is at least two or three years old. So that $50,000 vehicle by the end of the first year would be worth about $35,000 with 30% depreciation. By the end of the year, you have a balance of $42,000 on your car loan, so you're already $7,000 upside down on the car. By year two, it's worth $29,000, and by the end of year six, it would be worth about $15,000. So when you compare your car value to your car loan, and that's if you only make minimum payments on the loan, then you have to wait until the end of year four of owning your car to have more value than the balance of your loan. So your 3% interest rate ultimately becomes more like 
20% for the average depreciation rate. If you believe you can be 20% with your stock market investment, then go for it. If you insist on buying a new car, then at least put 30 to 50% down payment on the vehicle and then finance the rest. But you, you need to have a plan to pay it off as soon as possible. Don't buy a car just because you think you can afford a car payment. I would pay off $30,000 as soon as I could so I could save money on the interest that I'm going to pay for uh, the remaining four years. This car loan could slow down your financial independence journey. A vehicle in general is a liability because it is a depreciating asset. When you talk about a mortgage and investing, a real estate property has proven to appreciate over time over the course of 15 to 30 years. Your loan on a mortgage becomes cheaper over time with inflation. Your vehicle, on the other hand, becomes more expensive because it depreciates a lot and it doesn't last as long as it as a house. It will break down eventually and you will sell it or trade it in. If you make enough money to pay off the car within a year, then I would keep the car. If you don't make enough money to pay it off, then I would suggest selling it and use the money to buy something uh, less expensive. People on the fire journey generally do not have car loans. We don't wanna buy something we can't afford because investing is our priority so we can achieve financial independence a lot quicker than the normal retirement age. So let me ask you this, what would you invest with $800 a month if you didn't have the car loan? 